being recorded uh, RCTV, um, Verizon Channel 33, Comcast Channel 22, and it's, you can also find it at www.rctv.org. Um, Chuck, are you all set? I am. Okay. The first item on the agenda is Notice of Intent 270-0710, 8 Strawberry Hill Lane, Nap 7, Lot 192, St. Pierre. I'll just wait for Chuck to put it up on the screen. <coughs> start off but that that's the old plan up on the screen we have we Still the old plan. Right? The old one, yeah. <coughs> that one. That one. That's not coming up. Worst comes to worst, I can talk off the old plan, show the changes we made. Okay. 
obviously all have the, the new okay. plans anyway. I'll, I'll so. just I'll just I'll talk off memory. Okay. And, and, uh, for the record, my name is Jack Sullivan. I'm owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group, and I'm here with the owner of the property, Michelle St. Pierre. And we were before you a couple weeks ago. Um, she's looking to put an addition onto the existing single-family home and construct an in-ground pool with an associated pool patio and a shed. Uh, with the majority of the work taking place within the 100-foot buffer zone to an isolated wetland. At our last meeting, we were showing three trees um, to be removed within the jurisdictional area that were greater than six inches in diameter. One was a 40-inch tree, one was a 12, and one was an 18. Since that time, uh, Michelle had a, a tree expert come out to the property, um, Bob Moses. And I know there was a letter submitted to the commission um, on his findings. Uh, based on his site visit, uh, Bob had recommended and Michelle agreed to keeping the 18-inch tree, keeping the 12-inch tree, and the only tree to be removed would be the 40-inch tree. Uh, Bob Moses' letter uh, states reasons why it should be removed. Uh, and as part of this, uh, in removing it, we were going to leave the stump and then Michelle could grind it, but there'd be no excavation to remove the root system since the root system probably extends within the 25 foot no disturbance zone. Um, we made some major improvements to the plan at the last hearing. Uh, we had showed um, work right up to the 25 foot uh, no disturbance line. We pulled that back now the entire um, area between the 25 and 35 foot line will be protected. In addition, within that area, um, we provided a landscaping plan showing how we're going to provide some enhancement plantings within that 25 foot, uh, between the 25 and 35 foot line. Also, as a site design feature, previously we had the pool and we were going to have a large amount of fill coming in and uh, grading off the back side of the pool. Um, that's been revised. Now we're showing um, the pool to be two feet lower than the basement floor. There'll be, a, there'll be a two foot high retaining wall just off the rear of the deck with a couple steps down to a patio. By doing this, now the pool will basically match the existing site grade in that area so there's no filling that's needed. So all in all, it's a better plan. We also relocated the proposed shed to a better location before it was in the back left hand corner. It was really tight. Uh, we opened it up, she moved it over to the right side of the property. Uh, we're still retaining the proposed dry well for, for the roof runoff, and the commission had asked for a <coughs> landscape plan, which has been submitted. Uh, that landscape plan for removal of the, the, the large 40-inch tree, uh, they're offering up five trees to be, to be planted. And in addition to the five proposed trees, there's 52 perennials that will be planted as part of this project. So with, with the landscaping plan, you can see um, how she's going to try to retain some of the arborvitaes that exist now behind her existing patio to be placed along the side lot line. Um, the, the green area will be grass, and then between the pool and the 35-foot buffer zone to the wetland, there's about a 5-foot area um, that will be planted. It's not going to be grass. So in effect now, um, there'll be about a 40-foot buffer from the wetland line to the, the coping stone of the pool area itself. So we think we made some big improvements to this. Only one tree to come down. We do have a letter to support that. We do have a landscaping plan. She's doing an extensive planting plan, um, and we're limiting the amount of fill we're working with the existing site for the pool construction itself. At this time, I'll turn it over to the commission. I, I, did, I do want to know, I did a quick calculation on the total isolated wetland area. It's, it's 2,000 square feet. Um, I'm not sure. Under, when Norse went out and did this, they told me it was an isolated wetland that was not subject to the state uh, Wetland Protection Act, but it was subject to your local bylaw. I just wanted to give you guys the number. Of, I didn't have time to look into that to see what that means for us, but I know you did a site, I believe, earlier this week, so I'll turn it over to you for any questions you might have. 
actually like the uh, planting plan and the colored uh, plants that you sent with it. Carl, did you have a chance to I did. review? Yeah, I think the proposed shrubs, particularly in the no, between the no disturbance zone, um, they're very kind of Number of them. Uh, Looking at was that area in between the 25 and 35. I think that's a good. Yeah, I ticked them off. Ticked them off. And just, so. I knew there was some concern losing that tree canopy from the 40 inch tree, yeah. so that's why we tried to heavily plant that area so over time it'll be just a naturally vegetated area. Yeah, I so I apologize, I wasn't at the last meeting, but I, I did see the, the plan and, and kind of listen. To the meeting, but I mean, overall, I, I think what's being proposed here is to see the pool outside of the 35 foot. I think that's the standard that we kind of held everybody to. I, I, I like that series with their proposing to put back a decent amount of vegetation in between that 25 to 35 foot zone, which is generally a concern of ours. And what we're looking for. So uh, I think what we're proposing is. One of our, our sticking points was that large 40 inch. Um, I think it was a sugar maple, but um, <clears throat> even when we had done our initial site visit, Chuck pointed out that there was a there was a root that was coming right around, uh, and it, it you know it was in daylight, so it's kind of like a strangulation. But after reading Bob Moses's um, um, report on the health of that tree, and also seeing that scar from where that very large limb had fallen down this past year and done some significant damage. I think I think it's compelling that it, it does pose a danger to to the to the property. So what does it look like in what's it gonna look like in that area? You said you're gonna grind it down to surface. What's is you know around that planting, what are you expecting to, to have? I'm I'm just concerned this is a pretty good slope in that, that area. Right. Uh, is there any sort of protection you feel like you need to prevent? It would all be done by hand. Okay. Um, and we'll grind the stump, and they might have to put some protection on the downhill side, just you don't want wood chips going everywhere. I'm even just thinking from like a long term condition, you know, making sure that state that slope stays stable because it, it's. I'm just going off a of recollection, Jack, but it's pretty the, steep. The tree pretty it. much is at the break of slope. It's not in the down slope, so it's at the at the actual cusp of the break of slope. So if they're just going to grind it to to surf it, it's not going to interrupt the the downside slope of that. Right, and then the idea would be, you know, they'll have to rake out any of the leaf litter, get down to good soil, and, and then do the plantings. And it, it's pretty sparse back there, yeah. um, so. Um, there's not many, that, that's why when, you know, it, it looks wooded from the street. This is what we had from talk at the last hearing, but it's really just saplings. Um, so th this will help beef it up, but that, that would be the plan. They'd be done by hand. It wouldn't be done with any mechanical equipment. Are there any questions? Other questions from members of the commission? Chuck? Yeah, I just got this work and let's not close it yet. <laughs> I don't have any questions for the plan. I, I thought it uh, came in with all the suggestions we made from the first meeting. So. Are there any questions from the community? Uh, Hopefully we can get it up here. It's working now. Does it remind you the old Polaroids? Just change the batteries and remote it might get brighter. <laughs> oh my god. We do show she has granite bounds in the yard that she's going to reuse and place at the, the 25 foot line. Okay. Yeah. And 
and maybe I, I missed this, or maybe this is a function of changing. So the the patio is now set down lower. Was in the previous drawing set was there any sort of mechanism to have the drainage from all the, the patio go to the um, dry well or no? No, the dry well was specifically for the, the roof addition. Roof addition, okay. And previously we had the pool at the same grade as the basement. So carrying that out, there, there, just, there'd be like a two foot drop at the, the back end of the pool and then we were grading right out yeah, to like so the 25 foot line. So we were bringing in like two feet of fill so when we looked at it closer, I said, we, when the commission recommended pulling the work back to the 35 foot line, we looked, I talked to Michelle, I said, let's drop the pool just a couple steps down. It'll be cleaner. You don't, it won't cost her as much and it should make the commission happier. So I think, I think it's a better plan. Uh, oh, you know, for order the public chance, yeah, I, okay. I did ask. Just making sure. Didn't I? I did I paying, ask? I was paying attention to the computer. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was going to say, I move we issue an order of conditions for this notice of intent and close the hearing. I'll second. Just to say procedurally, I've heard that's fine with me. Okay. So, uh, just a point of correction or a point of clarification we do those separate. Okay. That's because we can close, write the order, and don't want to issue it right. until the next meeting. But the um, next meeting is about, I think, about January. Jan 9th of January, so we don't want to hold you up. But it's not, you know, it, that's, they that's have to wait the 10 days anyway, right? Right. And so. probably for the winter also, right. but so. yeah, this probably, you're not, are you going to start this project in the winter time? No. no. Okay. When, when do you think you might cut the tree down? Would you do it now? I would like to do while the ground is frozen, because Bob yeah. was saying he needs to bring in sort of a large grain or something yeah. and drive in to get to that, so yeah. I'd like to at least do that one tree. I move we close this um, hearing. I'll second. All those in favor? Okay, thank you very much. It doesn't change the, the point no. that we still have to get a notice of intent. Right. Or, uh, order order conditions conditions has to be issue it at the next meeting, right? That's what I heard came out of uh, Right, we didn't vote on issuing no. the order of conditions. Right. We only voted on closing. Great. Right. I should have said no. drafted. Special meeting next week wouldn't act as a. It's only for one item. No, let me just, since it's, okay. since it's a tree, can we separate the tree and give them permission to cut the tree? That doesn't have to be part of the order condition, right? Not, they can, we can issue a, an order for the permission for them to cut the tree under our tree policy <coughs> and then order the, the issue the order conditions on our next meeting. Why? It's snow. snow with the, there's no snow on the ground now. If they can get in there with no snow on the ground, it makes it substantially easier from a mechanical point of view getting getting because it's on a downslope getting machinery in and out of there why well, yeah but it's going to be a crane it, i mean you'll top it and then lift that out and then top you know i think she just said that he wanted to get a crane in there I, maybe it's a bucket truck that he's going to bring in there if he's going to bring a bucket truck in he's going to be in the backyard and that goes downslope if he's going to put a crane and just boom it, it over, the right house, over the house he, yeah. he doesn't have to doesn't it doesn't I mean, if he said he's going to be in your backyard, then he didn't. So, um, just a consideration for you know doing it during when the ground's frozen without any snow on the ground. We need to get a sign. Jack, how far is it from the driveway where the tree is? The forty foot tree. Yeah. Into the driveway. I'm not sure. You're going to set a crane up in the driveway to get over the house. Oh yeah. Well, here's the 100-foot buffer line. 
So the, dri the driveway's feet. right here. So yeah, it's, it, yeah, probably 75, 80 feet. That's a lot of purchase for a train to pick up a four-year straight. We have 21 days from when we close it to issue. We, we, we appreciate the commission talking about it, but he, he probably wouldn't come in until towards the end of January anyways with the holidays coming up. But we appreciate the offer. Thank you. But to keep it easy. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you uh, sign? Uh, <coughs> signature says the. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ye
The, uh, the other thing that we did in the meantime is the uh, town engineer reviewed the stormwater uh, submission. Had some comments. Uh, Sean has responded to that. And uh, I think as of 4 o'clock or so today, uh, when I talked to Chuck, I didn't hear back from the engineer. But I wanted to have Sean kind of go through those concerns and that, that were expressed and how he's addressed them. Um, but I think what we've got now is we've got a, uh, a plan that I think responds <coughs> to those issues that were raised at the last hearing, uh, reflects an accurate depiction of the wetland line, and, uh, and has addressed the additional issue of the tree policy uh, that was raised. But I'd be happy to answer any questions before I turn over to Sean to go to Stormwater. I'll let you go ahead. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, Chuck, can we uh, skip to the next plan? Uh, over <coughs> so over the left, Chuck. Uh, keep going over. Right there. Down button. Yeah. And there we go. All right. Um, so there was uh, there was a, a handful of comments from the town engineer regarding the stormwater. Um, as Tom mentioned, we have addressed this. We've updated the. Uh, Stormwater study plans and resubmitted that. Uh, I'll just briefly go over um, their comments and what our response was. Um, the first comment, just uh, this question is what we have in our stormwater report um, in the 100 year rainfall amount. Um, there was an error in our table, we have the wrong rainfall amount, so that has been updated to the correct 100 year storm event of 8.24 um, inches. The second comment uh, asked us just for an explanation of the um, minor increase in the two-year storm event versus a decrease uh, between the 10, 25, and 100 year. And what, that, what really happens there is because it's such a small watershed, um, and, and, and we're, we're capturing all the, the paved and impervious area, but we do have some area that's currently wooded that we turn into lawn, and the lawn has a uh, higher CN value, basically more runoff. So when you have smaller storms, the um, difference becomes greater. Um, regardless, the, the increase is 0.02 CFS, uh, just a little over 1% for the two-year storm. Um, but for all other storms, we do reduce the uh, the runoff. Um, they asked about the orientation of the level spreader. We outlined at the reach and catch basin here for the driveway. Um, they asked us if we could raise the uh, invert of the pipe to provide a little bit of a, a sump within that level spreader in case of sediment uh, accumulation so it wouldn't block the invert. Um, so we weren't able to raise the pipe just because of the structure. It's fairly shallow, but we were able to lower the base of the, the invert of the level spreader itself. So uh, we were able to provide that six inch separation between the inlet pipe invert and the bottom of the um, device. Um, they questioned the proposed sewer connection this was a discussion with the board and some of the, uh, um, the butters, particularly this butter here, which would be um, uh, affected for the time when this is constructed. Um, basically, we've been asked to look at alternatives to using this existing sewer easement, uh, primarily being able to come out to Azalea and come down to join the, uh, the existing sewer system. Um, we, uh, I visited engineering, I spoke with Alex, we looked at some plans of record. There wasn't any good information on that that we can use to evaluate um, the inverts to see if it's possible. So what we've done is we've ordered survey for um, the existing structure incarnation, there are structures, there was five manholes that we're going to have surveyed as well as this drain manhole here too. There's a 24 inch pipe that crosses here that we'd have to uh, get by in some fashion. Um, that uh, work is not complete yet. Um, 
but what, uh, what we're planning to do is continue to pursue alternatives to this current uh, sewer proposal through the, the ZBA process and resolve it with, with DPW um, as best we can. But we don't know if the alternative would be viable. Um, when this whole thing was set up, this easement was put in place here for this purpose. Um, but the, the owner of the applicant um, has directed me that if we can do it a different way that uh, um, doesn't include this connection, then they'll proceed that way. Um, the town engineer asked us to confirm uh, the driveway curb cut would be per the uh, town driveway standards. We've added a detail to the COO plan, COO2 plan uh, showing that conformance. And then there was a series of comments regarding um, utilities, uh, materials, inspections, notifications, um, excavation permits, things of that nature. So we've added a series of notes to the um, 03 plan uh, indicating uh, all those requirements. <coughs> And lastly, they asked us uh, to uh, include uh, stipulation that the stormwater inspection reports be submitted to the engineering division by January 15th of each year. Uh, we've revised the O&M plan uh, with a note to reflect that requirement. So uh, as Tom mentioned, we, we haven't heard back from engineering yet whether that satisfied um, all their comments, but um, we, we feel that we've addressed them at this point. And, oh, I'm sorry, one other, one other thing I did want to point out. Uh, as part of the stormwater study that we submitted, a, a question from one of the members um, was, we have pervious pav pavement for the parking areas here. Uh, and the question was raised, what would happen if these became clogged and essentially impervious. Um, so those calculations were included in our stormwater study. In short, it would uh, increase the runoff by 0 .06 CFS, um, a pretty, pretty small amount that, uh, given the size of the watershed, that this is going to really would be pretty immeasurable. Um, so if there's uh, any additional questions, I'd be happy to answer. I think, uh, so you explained, I think, most of my question in, in regards to your explanation there, so thanks. But I just wanted to, to touch a little bit on that pervious versus impervious. And the particularly with the, the two-year storm, or, or just in all of them, it does increase. So, you know, just from a, the, that, you know, that's in it, you know, that somewhat indicates that not all of the pervious pavements are, the pervious areas are, are leading to the, have a way to drain to the storage, right? It, some of this is in that paved area, in those hard surfaces, you, the pervious pavement areas are going to drain directly into the wetland, right? This, this uh, pervious pavement area, yep. uh, <coughs> would, it would uh, come off the side and then flow through this uh, enhanced buffer that we've established and then um, beyond. Yes. That's probably why it's increased is that back side there. Because everything on the on the left side of the, the proposed house is likely draining and getting captured in some manner. And right. If, if the pervious pavers were to malfunction with mm -hmm. age. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any way you could do like a, a gravel trench along the side where the uh, something that could potentially capture some of the runoff if the pervious pavers, the life of those didn't last? Uh, yes, I, uh, I think we could certainly do that. So we have the retaining wall here, uh, but what I'm thinking if there was a small lip, almost like a curb on the retaining wall, and then pitch that back to this area and establish kind of a gravel trench prior to the slope in here. Um, yeah. Increases the runoff time, the, the way that everything drains to that. You know, that. I think that's that's what I see is that's the area that's kind of increasing if the pervious 
uh, did end up malfunctioning. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's a great idea, actually. We'll, we'll add that to the plan. When you do that, does that, does that get into the, is it, is it the CAD, HydroCAD an analysis or? I mean, I wouldn't. If that's something that gets added, I would just see that as a net benefit. I don't, I, 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 to me, that's not something that requires a, a new evaluation. Uh, that's just, you know, th there's something that's causing a small increase when you have, when you change from pervious to impervious. <coughs> right. Which means it's not all going to the collection system. So if, you know, it seems pretty obvious to me that it's that far side. If we've got something that can help collect that, I think that's, that's just a better. I system. just wondered if there was a way that you can evaluate or analyze that, you know, because like grass swales have a certain number and then, you know, that type of thing when you do the analyses. What, what we can do is calculate a storage volume within that trench, 40% um, voids in the stone um, versus the length and width and um, add that to the plan. As, as Sean said, the increase, if that all clogged, you know, so there's a lot of ifs there, but if it all clogged, is six one hundredths of a cubic foot per, you know, flow, which is really, really minimal. I mean, it's sort of within the fudge factors of all the, all these engineering calculations all have conservative fudge factors in them anyway, so you're, you're always overestimating flow. And, um, it's, so, it's certainly small, but the, the intent, certainly is, helps. The yeah, intent no, is still there, right? We don't want to <coughs> increase the amount that's going to that, to the wetland. We don't want to increase the speed that it gets there. So right. the more we can do to reduce that, it's going to be Right. Better. So I think calculating the volume is a great way to address it. Going back and redoing HydroCAD modeling, it's such a small number. Mm -hmm. It seems not worth it. Any other questions from the commission? Um, how does the commission feel about the um, tree replacement? The the um, the six trees that aren't um, that can't be replaced. But there's no room. I I apologize. I mean I heard the numbers, but could you go over the quantity again? I, uh, yeah. So if we can um, on sheet C two. So if you can go on the up yeah. arrow there, Chuck. And then can you scroll over to the right? Keep going further. Okay. So right here, um, <coughs> there are 42 trees that are that are coming out 23 six foot taller greater evergreen and these would be native we'd like to give you the species list prior to beginning construction or at the time of procurement because it's been pretty tough to specify a species and actually find it in stock when you're planting nowadays um, eight deciduous trees two and a half inch uh, DBH or greater 15 shrubs that are three feet or greater uh, in height basically using the math in your policy gives us 36 tree equivalents so we're six short um, you know could we find a place to squeeze shrubs in yeah but I, I really wouldn't want to mess with it too much with the density within the existing buffer that we're not touching and that's where we would end up having to plant would be inside the 0 to 25 in a way that would kind of mess with something that is sort of more or less working as it is right now. Um, you know, we're already planting the areas that do need help, which are the areas where the buckthorn and everything is. So I kind of feel, you know. Yeah. The question was, the, are the uh, conifers intended to be a, somewhat of a visual block in, into there? Because I know I had even mentioned to you when we were out there that the, the sad thing is, is that there was so many mature beech trees out there which you don't really see. And yeah. the majority of trees you're replacing are conifers rather than deciduous trees. So I just kind of wondered why, they, I, I, I see why more. you're planting the yeah. ones to the right there and towards the street, but towards the wetland I'm not really sure why. Well, it, it's, we're, we're trying to, a little bit, trying to play a numbers game and get quantity and right. you can fit more because the evergreens are tighter canopy, okay. so you can fit more per area. We'd be happy to, to go over to deciduous, but it means we're going to be planting less. Less. And we because can do beach. Intended, you know. Because of the expected canopy size. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because 
because as they grow, you can plant the evergreens closer together. Um, beech trees will fill back in as long as there are still some around. Um, and uh, I think over time, you know, you'll see beech trees go in. Um, like, like I said, happy to, to do that, but it's going to be less, less evergreens going in. I mean, we've dropped the number of evergreens. Which was, what was the number, Sean, of evergreens total? That we're proposing now? Yeah. There is uh, 23. So we probably would be looking at like 16 beach or 14 beach. And I'm just quickly doing math in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. deciduous trees are planting the red maples, right? Well, we didn't. We didn't actually specify the, uh, the species on those. Specify the species. Based on okay. Availability. So, if okay. if available, I mean, we'd be happy with a condition that says if available, some of those trees would be beech. Um, but it, you know, beech is not a typical landscape tree, so it yeah. may be hard to find it. But um, they typically get pretty big too, though. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and they're beautiful trees. Is there any advantage to doing a Conifer versus a conifer. I mean, well, they're just differences. So a conifer um, provides a lot more nesting habitat and provides shelter for small mammals like squirrels, um, and it provides that year round. Whereas, it, well, <laughs> yeah, no, my attic too. But um, the uh, deciduous um, deciduous trees uh, give you. Sort of more perching habitat, more sort of seasonal nesting habitat, um, or 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 they give you some and they give you more shade. It's it just sort of difference okay. environmentally. You know, they they're both beneficial in their own way. Uh, I just want to confirm you're still proposing. I, I, it's on the plans, but you're still proposing to do the invasive species removal. Absolutely, we're still proposing those areas of buckthorn removal and and. Fairly aggressive native planting in those areas too. Oh. I, I, <coughs> understand, but I think that was originally added because there were there was a structure crossing the 35 foot. It's no longer happening, but that was from early sets. That that was my recollection. We we had cl closer impact. Okay. Um, we were doing a a bigger project to individual buildings, um, and our thought on this was, you know, this this project has been going on, I think, longer than any of you guys have been on the commission. Longer than I've been working on it. And it's been right up through the court system. Um, our <coughs> thought was, let's go with the same mitigation and just try to make the permitting smooth. You know, and I, just to kind of get it done. Yes, I guess the only reason I bring that up is that's still, that's something that, in my mind, added that for the current project, maybe it was necessary for something that was previously proposed for the current project is an added benefit. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from the commission? And is everybody all set with their? Um, um, we are patient? waiting. We're waiting for the engineers to. No, give we know us that. I know that, but I wanted to to talk about the donation to the tree fund of five hundred, <coughs> or or do you want to? Consider anything further. I consider the the replacement they're proposing the fund, and I would even add the, the invasive removal. In, in my mind, is a adequate replacement. Yeah, no, I'm fine with the five hundred. Okay with that? Anything? Yeah. Um, are there any comments? Uh, just so that the uh, community knows that we can't close this. We still have quite, quite a few unanswered questions on this project so there may be some changes to the design uh, so we wouldn't close this or, or make any um, uh, hearing or not hearing but approval at this point but um, are there any comments or questions from the community um, could you tell you Sal Gentile 54 Azalea uh -huh. prior to this the house is going to be built. They sprayed a bunch of trees with green dots. Well, do you know what that means? Cutting? Survey picked them up. Right. right. That was just 
that, that was just when the surveyors did their the survey of the trees, they sprayed it to mark that they had already taken the shot there. That's all that was. So that was just to identify what the tree was, how big it was, what species. Right. That's a temporary marking paint. Right. It, it, it will disappear with time. Did you, did you hear that, Mr. Yeah. Gentile? Okay. And if I can add one thing about um, the sewer line, we want to continue to on these plans and go forward with you guys as shown. And in the event where you're able to work out an alternative, we, as Sean explained, it, we could end, end up going out the driveway or on the upland side of the driveway out into the street and then go to, to do it. And we'd like to just, if that happens, come back in with a plan change. Um, we do have an easement. We do have a right to connect where it's shown. And that's where the original subdivision showed it is done. Um, but the client is supportive of us connecting elsewhere if we can figure it out. Uh, but it's, you know, it's not much of an impact difference whether we go out under the driveway or we go as shown in terms of your, your regulations and requirements. So we have until February 9th for the next meeting anyway. Jan Jan January. January. January 9th. And uh, <coughs> do you think you'll make progress on those questions with stormwater and with um, the sewer easement? I, I believe so. I, certainly with the stormwater. Um, as, as I mentioned, we, we have to wait till the, the survey gets back. They um, have been authorized. I don't know that it's been scheduled when their work is going to be complete, but mm -hmm. as soon as we get that, <coughs> to the sewer by the ninth as well. Okay. So. And I, I would expect the stormwater responses, we've all seen these, got big comments, we've addressed them with a big answer, and we're either going to get a confirmation that everything's good, or gonna get, we're going to get a small nuance. We're not going to get anything that changes design at this point in any meaningful way, you know, any more than, than the response to your question. That's probably the biggest plan change that we're going to see. So I think that where we're going to be at on the 9th is either a new sewer line shown that's going to be in an area that doesn't really change any of our regulatory analysis um, or not, and stormwater having been confirmed, because Sean would have heard back and been able to respond with any minor stuff. So we should have final approval plans at the next meeting, I would think, um, provided there are no other issues with the commission. So if possible, if that happens soon enough that Chuck could have an order ready. We'd love to be able to just get this done with at the next meeting, uh, if possible. But we do recognize we'll have to continue to that meeting. Can I just, um, before we totally wrap this up, just one little lingering question. I just might as well throw it out there. For the um, infiltrate and catch basin, what sort of um, treatment does that provide to the runoff before it gets discharged to the level spreader? Um, well, you'll have uh, a, a small sump at the bottom of it, and then it will rise up and be perforated on the sides. Um, and then we have greater than two foot uh, or two foot separation to the, the groundwater, so you actually get treatment through the per like a septic system. Um, so you do get some treatment through that recharge as well, and then the discharge to the, the level spreader um, and spread it out again filtering through the, uh, um, the, the lawn area and the planted area. So how much sump is going to be in that infiltration catch basin, leaching uh, catch basin? I think we're looking for a two-foot sump. That's, that's not on the schematic. It's not on the detail. bottom of the catch basin is going to be leaching too. It's not going to have a solid bottom. Well, the sump doesn't leach, correct? Correct. Yeah, it would be a solid so, bottom. Solid sump. So right. it leaches Leaching out walls. the sides and the sump collects right. any sediment. Okay. With the overflow going to the level spreader. The level spreader. And how deep, <coughs> excuse me, how deep is that catch basin? Because it says it's six feet diameter. 
what is that? What is the depth of that? So, so you're saying it's going to, um, the treatment it provides is by way of infiltration through porous material and yes, whatever and filtration that provides. In, in the sump itself, with the, the sump. And the sump to catch and settle out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is going to receive uh, rainwater, it's going to receive runoff from an additional catch basin at that point in the road. There is, right. So it's, yeah, so it's from kind of two locations right there at the neck right. of the road. And the, the purpose is this is just a low point, um, and so as not to have any runoff coming this way flow across the road. Yeah. Um, so that's all that is. And, and that would just be a smaller, like uh, a nioplast yard drain structure. The O and M for that for the resident. The O and M plan says, how are they to maintain that? Is that on the uh, resident to maintain? Yeah, that that on, that would that would. Or is it on the town or the, the owner, the owner of the property? That would that would run with the uh, okay. property. Is there? I thought I saw an O and M plan. Yes, as part of the, the drainage stormwater report. study. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do I hear a motion? Continue. Motion to continue. <coughs> Notice of intent 270-0709, 125 and 126, Azalea Circle. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor? So we're going to continue to the knife. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Can I, get the can I ask just a clarifying question? Invasive removal areas, so I can write them in the order. Right. Just a clarifying question for Tom. If there is no change that significantly changes this, are we going to be able to have uh, a uh, order of conditions assigned for the I'm, night? I'm not sure with this one. It okay. is more up in the air with this one than usual. Okay. We, before we were waiting for plan changes. With yep. this one, I don't, you know, from what I'm hearing from the engineer, they I just handed Sean uh, the memo that you guys were, had on your desk, yeah. mm -hmm. and he says he's the most troubling part is this connection with this storm drain or for the sewer connection. So I don't know where that's going, but if it sounds like it can get resolved, I'll, I'll try to get one. But the but is the sewer can does the sewer connection have anything to do with our? It's in the buffer zone. Pardon? It's in the buffer zone. The sewer connection is. Yeah. Oh. Never mind. I was thinking of that too, but yeah, either way, I think. Well, the, this way or this way. So the, the proposed few one away, leaves, it it leaves the buffer zone and connects outside in an easement that's intended for that. And then the alternate would be it goes into the road through the driveway, which is an existing disturbance shown on the plan. And I think, I mean, I've been a, a commissioner and I've staffed commissions, and I know I wouldn't look at it any differently if it was running under the under the road unless it was running through a wet area where the, the pipe itself would drain something. So you see the the sewage easement already exists for that property. Yeah, where we're proposing to do it. So the this subdivision was originally done by the owner of this lot. And this is just the last lot. And the original plan was to connect sewer there. So there's an easement in existence. The whole sewer line was designed for that. By Obviously, it's just, I think it's more complicated to the town engineer for going through and connecting within somebody else's property, even though it's on an easement. And it would be cleaner for them if we could go through the road, and frankly, it would be cleaner for the client. Okay. Yeah. Great. You're all set? Thank you. Do I need to continue on, sir? We can't. I have them right here. Yeah. 
Next item on the agenda, request for determination of applicability of 2018-10, Woody Glenmere Circle, Map 15, Lot 94, Willett. I'm Gina Willette, 40 Glenmere Circle. Uh, we are proposing to remove six unhealthy trees and grind their stumps, and grind the stumps, uh, two existing stumps that um, are all within the foot buffer zone. Um, uh, we are working with Bob Moses of Arbor Tree Service, and he has determined that these trees are unhealthy for uh, all the reasons we documented in the detailed work, out, uh, work description and pose a uh, risk to our property. And they, so you can see they are all within uh, less than 50 feet of our house. Um, as a proposed remediation, we plan to plant um, four sugar maples um, and flowering dogwood tree and uh, magnolia. Um, and then also in the back, we um, I want to plant wildflowers and some other um, plants that are on the approved native species list. Yes, we did. Dave, Anika, and myself we observed the trees. Um, um, there are white pines. Were there? there are three white pines and three red maples. Mm -hmm. And the stump, the existing stumps that we have, were from the white pine. Two other, two other white pines. Yeah. One of the white, one of the stumps at very um, on that side, the right hand side of the house. Um, it's a huge hole in it. All rotted out. Uh, we obviously want those all the stumps removed, so we have room to plant new trees and also to detract, you know, the uh, carpenter ants and termites. <coughs> we also saw. Um, I know you you have been working <coughs> on the, um, the the area between your lawn and the drainage ditch, um, the debris yes. back there. So I'm going to encourage you to continue that, the stick piles, the leaf yep, piles. That is all going to be part of, in the spring, the clean out, uh, getting all of that out of there. Jeff, do you have any questions? I do not at this time. Uh, are there any questions from the community? Any other questions for the commission? Did, Carl, did you look through the... Yeah. Uh, where are the... Uh, okay, I'll show you. Is there, let's see there. there are areas one, two, and three? Yeah. What are, you, what are you putting in two? Um, uh, wildflower and yeah. Okay, that's wildflowers, and then one of these is a magnolia, and the other one is a flower and dogwood. And this is closest to the drainage ditch mm -hmm. back there. Right, right. And there's a whole like series of pack of sand as ground cover back there. Uh, I guess my one question is the sugar maples get quite large as well. Okay. I mean, I am definitely open to suggestions. I was gulping based off of the um, list that was provided. Yeah, sure. um, I would gladly take recommendations for other trees that you think would be better suited. Not pines, preferably. <laughs> I don't think you're going to have to worry about the size of sugar maples. No. They grow pretty slowly. Yeah. And if you go up in like New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, those old, old white houses with big trees out in front, those are usually all sugar maples and they're three, four hundred years old, so the size they get, I don't think it's going to be your consideration. Plus you could tap You could tap them. Tap them. Tap them. Yeah, make some maple syrup. I've done that. Well enough. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, do I hear a motion? 
a motion for a negative, de negative. negative determination. Second. All those in favor? Which is a good thing for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is um, notice of intent for 28 Intervale Terrace, map 26, lot 217. Um, is this a brand new? This is our first time here. Your first time here? Yes. yes. I have a little uh, script I have to read. Um, this is a public hearing. Um, and is now opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearing is conducted in the following manner. Applicant presents a proposal. The commission receives reports from its administrator or technical advisors, and the commission will address questions and comments to the applicant, and the public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which is directed to the chair. And when you do that, please give your name and address before your comments or questions are presented. And I'm sure you signed the attendance sheet. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce members of the Conservation Commission, starting on my right. Lovely. David Pennett. Anika Scanlon. Rebecca Longley, Chair. Carl Sacconi. Michael Flynn. Chuck Tarani, Conservation Administrator. Okay. And um, you may present your proposal. Um, London Ring, uh, 28 Intervale Terrace. And this is, uh, my name is Anne Marie Ring. That's why. Um, so our proposal is um, to put an addition on our existing home, uh, expanding out um, the back, um, put an additional living space in the back, and then um, off the, the uh, left side of the house, um, expand out uh, and then also deck um, on the, the left corner um, of the plan there. Um, in order to offset um, uh, what we need to uh, because we're adding um, impermeable uh, space, um, we, we had someone design a catch basin for runoff from the, the new square foot area um, and uh, and that's represented on that um, there. Um, and uh, that's um, pretty much it that's what we, we would like to do so I know you guys did a site visit we did and did you are you verifying the wetland line or are you didn't saying it. that it's <laughs> didn't love it. far um, enough away to... Um, when I walked it, uh, I was missed. I don't know when... Um, Steve, I think it was Steve Erickson, North <coughs> Environmental. Yeah. Oh, it was 2017, um, about a year ago. Only there was one uh, flag missing, um, number four, and it turns a corner and it starts to go back towards the north. Um, I don't know. I, I think that the area is pretty low back there. And I, you know, it might connect to, somehow connect to Wetland Flag 7A and, you know, take a straight shot off of 3A. But I didn't spend a whole lot of time. And then you can see um, 5B through 1B, and that's along the bank, the top of the bank of. Um, perennial stream back there. So you have inner and outer riparian zone. And the house is all within just about all the uh, riparian zone. But the inner riparian zone is basically down, uh, the, the end of the inner riparian zone is down at the kind of at the base of the hill. And the rest of it in the outer um, is all grassed. It's already disturbed. So. So considering that the wetland flag and the area of five, six, seven don't have too much to do with this right. you know, application, 
we could approve one through four. That's just the line. Can anyways. you leave it at that, or we could connect? I'm sorry, three A. I couldn't find, um, and there was a, a large tree that had a conifer that had um, fallen over, and the, there was an exposed root system, and then there was a pallet on top of that, and there was there was quite a bit of um, yard debris, um, a lot of um, wood, 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 wood branches and things, right. Towards the more towards the house from the pallet, and you know, we would like that to be removed typically. Um, Brendan Ring, 20 inch Bell Terrace Banks, a question about sure. that. Um, are you talking about the, the pile of wood that um, looks like it was it, it was chopped at some point before we moved in in 2010? Mm -hmm. and it's just a pile of wood that's been sitting there. So, okay. do you want that out? Mm -hmm. In the pallet that's sitting on the root, that you know, that you know what I'm talking. It looks like a, looks like stairs. It's pallet, like a, like a um, supermarket pallet. Or yeah, the shipping pallet. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. on the tree that the tree that fell down across the wetland. The land. root, you know, yeah. the, how the roots up like this, and the pallet sitting yeah. on top of that root yeah. ball. Yeah. Okay. Is it? It was it firewood at one point. Is that what I'm hearing? Or just wood? It looked like uh, yeah. somebody had trimmed trees and just dumped them. Brush. Dumped, yeah, brush. brush. Yeah. yeah. Looks like looks like someone cut maybe a tree down and then split it, and he had intentions of burning it, but never got never got there. It's pretty old. It's been there a while. So let me get back to the wetland line. Are, would you accept WF number one through four, not accepting five and six, and accepting seven? Or do you want to just accept one through four and, and not discuss the and not discuss the rest? Okay, yeah. Let's not discuss the rest. Okay. I think one through four is, is enough yeah. to set the project. No. There's the other one that's outside of it, it, it really isn't germane to this project. Mm -hmm. and did you get back to check the back? Uh, just saw one of them and it seemed appropriate. Yeah. So, so given that the, the, the 75 feet is still accurate, this project 75 feet from the BBW and uh, 136 feet from the uh, river bank, mm -hmm. I assume it's on existing lawn. It is on existing, yeah, definitely. And for mitigation, they're doing a 500-gallon mm -hmm. infiltration trench, and they're they're uh, infiltrating all the proposed new structure. And there's no trees being taken down for this project. All those flags are outside his property line, right? Yes, they are. I'm assuming that's the back of his property. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I have two questions about you. Uh, one of the things I observed when we were out at the site um, is that a a decommissioned septic tank that's at the corner of your existing porch that's there now that's going to be part of the addition. It's a big round. You have a, you have a round steel cover that's um, there. Do you know if that's a, a old septic tank? Um, <coughs> unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that. I looked in there and it looks just like a, I think it goes down about two feet maybe and it's just empty. If that's a decommissioned septic tank, you're going to have to address that when, when you're digging your foundation for the addition. Okay. Um, is it, so can, I just don't know what that means for, for this. <laughs> Maybe when, nothing. Or yeah. just a little ground so what if, it's, if it was decommissioned, they're running to the street and it's filled with flow fill, what's... Right. Just I don't know if, it, if, it's, it. if it's in, right. You just dig it out and no. get rid of it, or you crush it in place, but it's, it can't be, I guess, does, kept. Does That's it have, have a kind, of, kind of like a well boundary on it, like a rock or a brick? Or no, it's just it's a just level a, level steel, oh. like a two-foot steel cover, like you see on top of a, of a septic tank. It's Where level with that again? it. It's right, right. right at the, uh, if you look at the... Uh, like the front corner of the porch. Uh, yeah, so um, this is the addition. It's the existing, the existing to the porch. To the left, yeah. right? The front, front, no. 
No, no the back, front no, left corner. Front. front left corner, right next to you. To yeah, yeah, right, right in that there. corner, right there, where the stairs are. To the left, to the left, left, right there in that corner. Mm -hmm. Right, oh, right off that corner. There's a two foot steel plate that looks like. Oh, that um, I'm sorry. Um, that that's not. That's just a cover I found when I uh, removed. Um, so it, it originally was. To, it's just a manhole cover that was originally underneath something that the previous owner had on the side here to put garbage cans and things. So when I removed that, I found it underneath that. And I thought when I was going to lift it up, I was going to find a hole or something. But it, it's really just a manhole cover. And I put it by the trash. Oh, because so I there's nothing underneath it. Yeah. No. Well, I guess it's not at all septic yeah, tank then. No, it's a safe room for squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> that's where your that's where your wife you know hides what? all it's there and I, that's where I your wife hides all her egg money. <laughs> I haven't tried to get rid of it. All right. I think I the other, the other yeah. question that I have is what's the what's the uh, um, what's going to be the uh, surface ground cover underneath the deck? Do you have uh, like pavers there now? What's going to be the, underneath the deck? Underneath it's going to be crushed stone or is it going to be? You know, just dirt. Or what's I think going to be under the right dirt? now the idea is just dirt. I don't. I don't have any plans to put anything underneath that. Well, plenty of dirt. We'll run out of that. Any other questions from the commission? Any questions from the community? Okay. So I just have two. Two conditions: the one about the flags, and then just removing the pallet and wood. And, and the brush. Brush, not wood. I guess it's. I'm going to call it brush. Yeah. Okay. okay. Ask a silly question. What is the cloud? That's the drainage area. I the think. Drain. Yeah. No. I, I, say that on I used to live right across the street from where they were thinking of doing this. I, I don't know what that. I'm just wondering. That's that? on the top of the hill at Indrail Terrace. Yeah. Does that Up slope, does that drop right. off dramatically back into that? Oh, yeah. The yeah. wetland? Yeah. I think I would think it must have to. It does. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. It does. I mean, Actually, kind of, there must have, Dave thought that there must have been a round pool there at one point because it's kind of mounded up and flattened. Mm -hmm. And then it goes down and then it goes down further to the, uh, the terracing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we have to. To your question about the cloud, I have any other special conditions? An engineer do the original plan, and I had another engineer do the plans for the, the uh, tank basin to catch it, and he just put that cloud around his work. Saying that was he's to stamp it. He's stamping his engineered calc. Can't close them. Can't close. So they're saying that they're just waiting for the check to clear, and you might want to just give them a call. And, and this is one that we would, would, we would prepare for the next meeting, so you won't lose any time. But as long as you can solve that and we get the file number, uh, which department is waiting for the check to clear? It's probably remember they, they sent the one to Boston, one, one, to one, to one in Boston, but you call Wilmington to ask them. So the one we sent to Boston, they're waiting on that. It just, it just, there's a note. They don't so get a number until all that. file number yeah. lookup. You just Google that, and you'll come up, hit, you know, you just scroll down, Reading, and then you can see all the applications and all the file numbers. And then you would just click on the link, and it tells you the comment, and the comment consists of just waiting for the check to clear, which could happen. I mean, we could check. I checked about 4 o'clock. So it I don't know if it happened yeah. between well, four and now. It's but a draft. draft. It's not going to hurt you with any time at this point, really, because what Chuck will do is, it will, generally when we do have a project like this, we'll instruct them to start preparing the note, the uh, order of conditions, mm -hmm. so that's ready for us to look at, at the next meeting, yeah, and we can all sign it. So 
he's going to do that either way at this point. We, there's not a whole lot to change. So. Unlike Azalea Circle, which this is 99% pretty cut complete, except we don't have right. the file. A DDP. Yeah. So. Okay, that's all. So, did you say DT file number? DEP file number lookup. Just general question, is that, that's really not normal, right? Like no, it happens all the time. It happens a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It happens yeah. pretty often that you know, we'll get something and they haven't had a number yet. And, yeah. It's not even on the website yet. Is it? Yeah, it's just right there. So, um, didn't you drive there and hand them the check? I thought, oh, you, you know, handed them the application. Right. So should we change it? Yeah, handed them everything. Yeah. Yeah. Change it to continue? I'll revise it to continue. Okay. So I make I make a motion to continue. Second. All those in favor? Okay. okay. Thank you. So we're coming back Thanks. January 9th. Yeah, yep. we're back to January yep. 9th. Yep. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Can we close and sign on the 9th for them? We can. If they, if yeah. they have this one, number. Okay. unlike Azalea, this right. one this is straightforward. It looks like it's pretty good. Yeah. So we'll read the yeah. pictures on the 9th of the. Brush, can I make a motion on the next four? Sorry, no, 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 no. That will be part of the project. That's so part of the that's project. Part of yeah, that's all. That's going to be yeah. put within the, motion on the next uh, three. order that Chuck prepares. It's going to say that you need to do it. Yes, you don't need, need to do that to. before the nine. Okay. Thank make you. a motion to continue NOI 270 0074 1503 Marion Street, Lot B. There a second. What are you guys doing? Second. second. Yes, we got it. We're continuing. 720, 725, 730. Okay. To make a motion to continue NOI 270-0705-1503 Main Street, Lot A. Second. All those in favor? We have a, a, a DEP number for the Lakeview Eaton. Yeah. They did issue one. I believe it's, but I'm not going to yeah. guess, but I think, it's, I think so it's 11. Can I just make a motion to oh, uh, right. continue uh, NOI for 23 to 25 so Lakeview Ave and Eaton Street? Dave, before you continue, I'll just, I am recusing myself from that project because right. I've been involved on right. the, the what's been in front of the DBA, so yeah. I won't be voting on anything right. in regards to that, and when it's actually open, I'll okay. be sitting down. So. Okay. Are you going to say that next week, too? I'll repeat it. Uh, I don't know. I'm not even going to be up here next week. It's yeah, a special meeting. Because so. yeah. it's just that one thing? Yeah, yeah. pretty much, yeah. So the next meeting, the one you just continued yeah. to uh, December, 19th, December 19th, is going to be at January. the Senior Center. Right. December 19th at the Senior oh, Center. Sorry. And it starts screen? at 7 o'clock. And our following meeting January for everything 9th. for January 9th will be at the Senior Center. So everything. So okay. Lakeview and Eaton brings in a, a bigger crowd, oh, oh, oh. and we want to make sure that we can accommodate them. I, 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 I thought we were renovating her. Like never. <laughs> Silly me. What? Never mind. I just I'm babbling. So sorry, I was babbling too. Babbling. Yeah, it's just like a book. Going to be yeah, yeah no, I just don't want to make sure I know. So I'm not going to vote. This You're not going to vote on the continuation. Yeah. Not a problem. Well, you abstain, I guess. So are you going to make that announcement next week, or is this this yeah. is your announcement? I'm not going to go up to the table next week, so. So you're not. Really you're, you're just going to. I can make it again in the audience week week for the record, but. He'll be here going. I have really no problem. Uh -huh. oh, you're making it for the record now, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Just because you're in the audience, no heckling. <laughs> the senior center, so. Uh, if you're like right across, you can almost see it from here. Is that helpful? <laughs> So, because you could drive here and have a cold walk. Can I make so a motion again to yes. uh, continue 23 to 25 Lakeview Avenue and Eaton Street? Wait a second. Second. All those in favor? Abstain? I don't think I even do that. I'm, I'm okay. There you go. All right. Um, the record that Mike I just see the, Flynn has recused these guys over himself. Here. On we should get them along. For all of Lake mm -hmm. okay. Under all new business, minor plan change, notice of intent 270 0708 30 Ashley Place, map 39, lot 190, Mahoney.
What? Nothing. I was going to say, you know, the thing about this is that we're pretty sure that, I mean, we, I think you guys went there, you went to the site. I'm not sure. Did you go to this site? I went to this site. I walked over there from Town Hall oh. and checked it out. And, um, did not, you did not go to the site. I didn't, re I didn't revisit it because we've already been there twice before uh, to the site. So <coughs> it's just a minor plan change for the, um, the foundation for the addition that was going to be on the back of the house, which was already part of the, the initial um, proposal. So for this site, I did go to the... Um, <coughs> And, and relook at this again. And I know that I can add, one thing I can add is that, I'm not sure this is what happened, uh, but Glenn uh, Redman, our uh, building commissioner, uh, likes to see full foundations underneath living spaces. So I'm not sure if that added to the conversation, and this is why we, we got to this point. But to, to have this addition out there, I, I know that Glenn would be, you know, more pleased about it being constructed this way. Well, he does allow it on sauna tubes, but you have to jump through more hoops. And um, so I can I can see why this has come up. Do Just because I don't. Sauna tubes that have a big expansion. Well, do you do that? Yeah. So there's going to be um, so the 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 support for the, the deck is going to be those um, those standalone piers. Uh, but there's a three foot bump out where the kitchen's going. And our thought was also put those on piers just to be easier, less of crews that's involved. Um, and then when we are moving forward in parallel with you know, the building commission, um, Can you bring our structural engineer and the, um, and the, um, it was decided oh, sorry, that yeah. it makes more sense to have, it's a three foot bump out on the back of the house. They've decided to have that as a, uh, a foundation wall versus the piers. <coughs> so Excuse me. Spoke with Chuck and uh, we revised the plan that I wanted to uh, just seek your approval. Control uh, shift plus. Yes. So it's just so I understand, it's this right here, this, this small. Piece okay. right here, yeah. So this is an addition, and then this was going to be on the tubes. Put that on the uh, foundation wall as well. Any questions from the commission? What? Do you need any additional precautions to remove that much soil? Uh, we are going to remove it from, from the site. Um, we're going to have um, the machines that we would need to, to dig that foundation mm -hmm. on site anyway. So we'll just uh, take the same precautions. Everything that we're, all the foundations that we're putting in are outside the 35 foot mark. And, um, we have that, that buffer fence up. Um, we're going to remove all the soil that we harvest. And we're also going to be putting in the 1,000 gallon um, dry well with pipes to that. So. Which we'll side be. are you entering from? I'm, I'm On the right hand side. Yes, we're really coming. This is the driveway. Because <coughs> you guys are already digging where the existing shed is, right? Correct. So this is where we move this out of the way. We're going to come up, you know, dig this, dig this, and put the, uh, the tank in. And then we'll probably put those, the piers are along this. Could you just add some more erosion controlling? You don't have to use hay bale, sure. by the way. Um, and just turn the corner so no one's going to go over that easement and over that culvert. Yeah. Kind of blocked off that side. Just to, if you're not there, someone will come again. Subdivision. Along this area. I think you're all saying, like, if you could just take this point and just turn it so it comes down here, like a line, now you just kind of block off that side. So this work's going to be done in um, during the winter time. So, you're doing the work so now this is or? my sister, uh, you know, to, to help.
come clean. This is my brother, my sister, my brother-in-law, my sister's brother. Sure. Um, so we're trying to get it done in the in the winter time, um, and uh, yeah, if, if the weather holds, we. I yeah, know. Last year we did a project. Remember, it was a negative twenty degree a week. Um, yeah, yeah. So far, so good. Maybe it's in the negative twenty yet. Yeah. Um, uh, when are you ready to go on this? Ready to go. Ready. Is, is the equipment that's going to be used back there going to really dig into the lawn and really erode it? Is that a concern, you think, Chuck? Or? Well, they have the erosion control up there. Yeah, they do. I mean, as a matter of fact, it, I, the way the erosion control is kind of, frozen. kind of put out there in this, you need this right. straight across, yeah. something like that. I know it looks like you have to be frozen. Yeah. We can go you just figure out how much how much space you need, and then just bring it up where you can. Okay. Have it come across. That would that would be best. And then there's not going to be any erosion problems. And, and just to be clear, that you know, because this is a minor plan change, they were proposing to dig mm -hmm. on a foundation. Sure. Yeah. No, I'm not objecting. I'm just wondering if oh, sure. what changes might be necessary to the order, if any at all. But the other thing is you also have to remember it's, that the it's pretty the tight deck, over there, and there is a drop off. Yeah. Um, it was a, a deck that was already there that, that there wasn't grass under anyway. But they're putting that three foot bump out, and then the other side there was that that tree. There's no grass under there either, so <coughs> so they're really digging where there's you know grass anyway. The yeah. grass was located more on the. It's a very shaded area. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, well, He's very proud of his backyard, so I think I think going forward, we we tend to have a lot of family parties out there, which the family isn't all that excited about because it's very muddy and kind of bossy. Um, so the I think privately, my 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 hope is that uh, the new reality would be much better than the current reality. Uh, yeah. So we're hoping that this, the grasses will be. They, they, get, they just got a dog, so they're realizing that grass is helpful for the dog. Um, and that's a uh, dog that jumps up a lot of furniture. So I think they're, they're learning. So I think the grass is going to be an important thing. They're going to do some plantings uh, in the backyard. I move we approve the minor plan change. Uh, any questions from the community? Okay. I'll second. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Minor plan change 270-067-6113 Arcadia Avenue, aka also known as Zero Low Meadow, map 14, lot 15, Priest. So don't jump over that. Then we took a look at this very briefly. Um, you have left. I'll know at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, we had looked at those trees before. There were four trees right along the um, so fence line, three white pines, and what was the other one, David? Oh, red maple? Yeah, I so. well, We have looked at that previously. And really the only thing that, that is different or, or is, the, is change is um, an underground propane tank um, basically to the left of the, uh, the new home that's being uh, built. So, so <laughs> this was a project that we got a superseding order from the DEP. Right. So do we really have any say? We have say, but yeah. we want to be second. I, th I think we should be second to say yes. We haven't heard from DEP, so you can give, if you wanted to, give approval pending a receiving a letter from the DEP saying that the trees <coughs> And the tank are okay with them because all changes on the superseding order have to go through DEP. Right. I'm going to make a motion to approve the minor plan change 270 0676 113 Arcadia Ave. Provisionally? Provisionally to the receiving the approval letter from DEP. Do I hear a second? A second. All those in favor?
Certificate of Compliance 270-0681 and 270-0547 14 Strawberry Hill Lane Road, Map 7, Lot 193 Moynihan. And finally, <laughs> you made it. You're very patient. I thought you guys were here because you were butters. <laughs> no. I wouldn't miss a good meeting like that. <laughs> We've got a spot, right? I'm always joy. Mm -hmm. call something up if you want to, but I mean, the discussion, do you want me to do this? Do you, you guys you want to talk? I mean, we're, we're here to obviously get our sign off for compliance and to get our $5,000 bond released. Well, why'd you really come? <laughs> I mean, I take personal <laughs> checks, Bob, so. <laughs> so, uh, this project was done by the MBA builders and then the, the house was bought and the um, Moynihan's took over the responsibility of both orders of conditions, the ones for their pool and the one for building the house out. One had, I checked just this afternoon because I wanted to prepare everything, one has a $10,000 bond on it, that's MBA, the other one's a $3,500 bond. So you might want to check that, but that's what I'm seeing. Um, so. There's two bonds out there. Um, and so at this point, we've gone to the site and we were brought out there specifically to look at the driveway runoff, uh, the right side of the house where they had taken down some, you know, some, some brush. And they created kind of a swale and they vegetated that area and they put grass in it. They planted along the back. They planted everything that we wanted um, inside the fence and <coughs> against what we're going to call it, is that pond. And then um, we went there one day and um, when we were looking at 8 Strawberry Hill Road because this was coming up and we noticed that there was some turf on the ground next to the back deck area and that was uh, tr well traveled and there was mud coming out of it and the, and the grass was, was uh, missing. I think that we, you all got the letter from the landscaper um, that said that um, that sod was well rooted and there should be no problem for it to come up. And I would add that um, there's also mulch, like a mulch bed next to it. So it's a thin strip of lawn sod and then a mulch bed, then a stone wall, then a drop off, and then forest, and then down to the, the pond. Um, that's what I know from being there. That's kind of what the site looks like, but there was that, that mud um, on that rainy day that we were out there. You know, I, I think um, deference to the, the applicant, uh, the owners, I think um, they will make every effort to have that area well established at some point. They're not going to want to have a muddy patch. Um, so I don't really consider holding the bond. Yeah, I don't see that a reason to hold it up. And you know, yeah. I think it's been in good shape. I think a lot of the reasons for the bond back when this was going on was because of the condition of the site at the time. Right, and, and worrying about what we could do because it was at there were points when this was just a big lot with no protection for the home. That I, it's I really don't, sandy too, remember? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't really have an issue with, from what I've heard, feeling like we need to hold anything based on that. When we were up there, it was, it was really raining and it was muddy, but the that grass and that and the slope was stable. It wasn't like we were you know, it was sliding down. Correct, and, and also I want to put uh, point out the, the day that you guys came out was also a week after we had just completed fall cleanup, which involves wheelbarrows, a riding lawnmower, and we just had the pool closed, which involves a machine going back there over that patch to pull the pool cover over. So 
that's a lot of <coughs> heavy machinery and that is the only access to the backyard as the right side of the lot uh, it's grant stairs so any to any sort of machinery or anything like that has to go unfortunately through that left side So there's two orders. You have to do them separately, and then a, and we after that's done, then you would le release the bond. Do we have okay. to vote? Are there? Uh, are you here for this? No. Okay. So the, can I make a motion to uh, approve the certificate of compliance for 270-0681? Uh, do we have to do these separately? Yes. Yeah. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Make a motion to approve certificate of compliance 270-0547, 14 Strawberry Hill Road. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? So, now do I have to yep. motion, to release, motion the to release the bond for both of those? I think you, do you have to do those separately? Yeah. In, individually? Okay. Then I uh, make a motion to release the bond for 270-0681. I'll second. All those in favor? Make a motion to release the bond for 270-0547, 14 Strawberry Hill Road. You guys don't want to step up now? I'll second. I wrote it. <laughs> All those in favor? All set. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Be um, <clears throat> before you go, I noticed that and one of the things just, it's something that's a, has it, and I, I just watch when I see that, is the rain that comes off your roof because you don't have gutters and the splashing back up. It's going to be very few years before the bottom, what they call the rain table on your house, is going to be rotted. So like where it comes down to the right of your garage, sure. and you should put uh, even even a like a big planter that's filled with like crushed stone, okay. that would make that not bounce off your driveway and then up onto your house would help a little bit, but that's that's going to be you're going to have rot problems from the rain, Don't want that. rain, <laughs> rain jumping up on your new house. Anything uh, our house is rotted anymore with all that? What's that? With all the plastic wood yeah. and all that. Yeah, no, so I know what you're saying though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's uh. It'll just make a messy off. It's dripping down and dirty mud. Yeah. There's grass there. It'll Problem is, you see some people have ASIC, and it good gets behind the ASIC, and it rots what's behind the ASIC, or the hardy, hardy, hardy uh, siding, hardy back of siding. It's. Uh, Did you guys have a good summer with the pool? Got to enjoy it. Yeah, it was nice. So, um, paperwork will be ready on Monday. I will just initial that. Saying the bond was five grand, and I'm seeing the initial uh, transmittal form, which was 3,500. Do you want me to hold off sending that upstairs? I mean, they would know it also. No, go ahead and send it, and I'll double check. Okay. And see if there was something else, but go ahead and send what, send what you I think got. my recollection was because we had 10,000, it really didn't make a lot. Uh, it could be. Okay, so I'll, I'll sign those and put them both upstairs, and the other two, I'm assuming that you send we both to, to you. Someone has to get these recorded, though. Is that going to be you guys? Yeah, we'll take care of that. Yep. Okay, so we'll send them both to you. Okay, Perfect. that's all I did now. So, be, so where can I collect that on Monday? Or is well, that just go to the treasurer's office. So they'll have received this um, that paperwork that says um, the commission is okay with releasing the bond. Okay. And then... It's usually that's all I do, and then you have to go upstairs to the treasurer's office. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good one. Okay. All right. um, certificate of compliance 270 0647 Oak Street, right of way, MWRA. Christine. Excuse me, Christine. <clears throat> My name is Jerry Sheen, Mass Water Resource Authority. And <coughs> excuse me, do 
you want a quick overview, I know there's some new board members of what the project was. Um, 36, there's a 36 inch water pipeline that went from Main Street in Reading, went down Hopkins Street, <coughs> down to Summer Street where the school is, and then it took a left at on Oak Street and it um, went up Oak Street all the way and then down West Street to Woburn. It was a critical loop in the MWA supplying the town of Reading and um, also um, Wilmington as well. We installed two new meters. There's a meter on Luanus and there's also a meter on um, the park at Leech, Leech Park at Hopkins. You know, um, as part of this project, the only order conditions was at Oak Street. It's a small brook right near Oak Ridge and we had to go um, underneath that brook with a 36 inch pipeline. And we felt um, the project was complete about a, a year ago. And meanwhile, we worked with the town of Reading and um, we've activated the two meters and, and now they're supplying their, their water tower with water. I know the town's got some plans to decommission another water tower. So this is, um, this is in the right moment to make sure that the other water tower's got um, <coughs> supply at all times. Um, the MRA at this point feels like we've complete we've uh, completed the project and complied with all the order conditions. Um, we've supplied some of the backup as-built documentations. There was a general condition 27 which detailed what we had to do for the closeout of the project, and um, we submitted all that documentation. So we were looking, we were respectfully requesting um, compliance for that project. So I went to the site and uh, looked at what I could see, and um, I didn't see any, any reason to not issue a certificate of compliance. And I think that I would, you know, working with the MWOA was, uh, was a good, positive experience, and that, um, I think that they, any time I had a question, they made time to answer that. that the Conservation Commission had. It was a different group back then, a couple years back, um, and uh, I think it all worked out really well. So my recommendation is to issue uh, a certificate of compliance. Being one of those new members, I'm kind of, I guess I'm impressed or surprised I, that you're working so closely to make sure you adhere to the requests of the once in a town. Because you are who you are, you think you'd be able to just going to do the project and say, "We're done." I right, know this. This um, you get uh, the board issues of order conditions. You have to comply with that order conditions and get it recorded so that um, it, it, it's technically in the, um, closed in the, in the conservation committee. I, I get that, but I just would not have <laughs> thought that you would have been subjected to that kind of you know total the line thing. I don't know why. Okay. Everybody's held to the same standard, Bob. I, but in, in certainly they are part of the standard, right? I would think so. Anyway, but I think, that's, that's I, I think um, just echoing what Mr. Tyrone says is that the NRA treats environmental concerns, because we're an environmental agency, treats it um, with <coughs> importance, and we want to make sure that, um, you know, that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Makes sense. I, I'm just, I'm just, I Some agencies impressed. get limited project favors like the Mass Highway Department. Um, I don't know if they're, I can't remember if MWRA has anything. Yeah. I, I move we issue a certificate of compliance. Do I hear a second? Second. All second. those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then one, I have to record the, yeah. that at some point. So. so this is sent to two Griffin Way? Yes. Okay. And then I'll send it to them. Needs to record, and I need uh, proof of recording. Thank you. And that's all. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Does this is mean I can get rid of this. Yeah. That's him. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Chuck's file copy. Here mine. Oh. Is this your file copy? No, I send you the big stuff so you can see it. You're important like that. Yeah. Because you're so important. Yeah. You get our most. Oops.
just dropped it. This is the next one, Chuck. Did you go out and go ahead, Mr. visit Green. this? <laughs> Not what happened to my... Uh... Uh, Same address, 76. What? 76 Longwood. The other one was... Mm -hmm. Mahone. Mm -hmm. Mahone. Yeah. The other one, the map we were looking at, unless I had the wrong thing in front of me. I think you had the wrong thing in front of me. <laughs> I thought, well, it's funny, because I was showing the drawing to David, I said, this guy doing no, he's, no, but this used to be this is an old map. I went, oh, so I just shut up. <laughs> the, the wrong... <laughs> You set me up. You didn't know. <laughs> I told you this was... It was the guy that put the addition on us a couple of years ago. The Irish guy. It was him. <laughs> so any... This Longwood Road, 76. I must remember it. I haven't seen it since it was under construction. Comes out to West Street. Yep. So it's on the. Is this the one that's on the corner? Grove. No, no. That's like nice. when you come around by Austin by Austin Austin Prep onto West Street, okay. you take a right and then a quick left. It's right along the Abajona. That's the one I was looking at. The opposite side of Arcadia. Yeah, yeah I, I guess I don't think I was around for this. I don't, I don't yeah, this is the it's a little project. I think it was. It was just not memorable. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> the guy that was here wasn't from 76 Longwood. <laughs> I thought he was on the MWI. I right? found out him, the guy that was here, was from Longwood or something oh. else. He was right here on the other side of Arcadia. The other side of that famous curve on Arcadia. Yeah, I remember we did one at like the corner. We did this one here. Yeah. yeah. They were just doing a pool and a deck, or maybe just a deck around the pool, or something like that. Longwood. So that's Longwood right there. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get something better to look at. And is this Google? Google? Yeah. So there's a fence along the perimeter. Oh, I remember this one. And it drops off right off the back there. Back here is where it dropped off. And, you know, I guess some of us walked back there. Here's the stream. Yep. But it's enclosed in a fence, and they did and they did this addition and a deck. And So what I remember <coughs> about this one was the markers, right? We had very specific directions about where the wetland markers were supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And it had to do something with, they, they used to have, the play play structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, swing set back there with the gravel basin. Mm -hmm. They had one of those toxic swing sets. Mm -hmm. Was there some? <laughs> I remember the Was the plantings they were doing. We were all uh, blueberries. So I guess looking at the wetland markers, I don't understand this one that's closest to flag 3B. There's a, there's Is that a, just supposed to be a turning point? Yeah, it's... Or, it's or, because that's kind of a meaningless marker. There's a gully there. It's like a... Uh -huh. It's like a pit. Did you check the bounds, Chuck? I didn't. The markers? Uh, it's the end of the fence. And it goes yeah. around the fence. Yeah. <coughs> so um, I saw that there was a few up there. I didn't look oh, to see. So are the markers up. on the fence? Yes. Well, not on this side of the fence. You know, I actually think that, that that's what they were. Because I. <coughs> the meeting we did tell them to put them on the
the fence, and I don't know if we meant I thought we this meant, fence, Yeah, too. I thought we meant this fence to put them or something, and, and then they were going to have... I guess I didn't remember a fence. Um, it would be easy enough to ask for two more to be installed if you want to have one kind of near B4. I, d I don't know if it... I guess um, it just has to do with, you know, if, if a marker... What's the meaning of the marker for this site? You know, that's what I'm, I'm sort of looking at this project in terms of like consistency of meaning. Does the marker mean the same thing across the site? Is it in the right place? I wasn't really part of this permitting, I don't think. I think I was, because I know these residents. Um, I think the reason why it was there is because this was already um, the their yard already extended past where their property line was, and it was already grass. That's why. Okay, so it's already established. Yes, it was already established, and the and the the the, the grass, the landscaped area, was beyond their property line already. Um, That was uh, when they were putting the fence in down that side, which there wasn't a fence. It was agreed at that, that time to uh, put the boundaries or the markers on the fence. <coughs> All right, well, if that's what was decided at the time, have the projection. I mean, it's on this plan. This plan's going to be filed. Yeah. So. Do I hear a motion? A motion to issue the Certificate of Compliance for 76 Longwood. Second. All those in favor? What do we have left from the uh, last one? Oh, okay. They want to have one released. Oh. Yeah, so we already issued the Certificate of Compliance and uh, we just Coming back to release the bond. Release the bond. Do I hear a motion? A motion to release the bond for 270 0623 101 Miller Street, Austin Preparatory School. Second. Those in favor? an interesting site that we've talked about before. Um, this is 1260, 1264 Main Street. Is there a spot in the... I just figured there's some room in the agenda right now to talk about this. <coughs> no. <laughs> Go ahead. What's the address? What is this? 1260, 1264 Main Street. So this is the one oh, that built Veterans Way. Veterans Way. We went out there and they... They came in with two notices of intent, so the three houses on that one side. Yep. The one's existing, and they wanted that one to be a two-family house, but it was determined that it, it wasn't in the past, and it can't be now. So I think that they were they were trying to figure out the best their best options, but right now their best option is just to make it a single-family house. So um, they're going to be submitting a notice of intent for that in the future. Remember, they held off on that one, but they did the two, the other two. Um, they, she said shortly, but she wants me to sign off on the demolishing of the structure so they could at least demolish what's there and then submit the notice of intent and talk about um, you know, what's, what's going to be built. So the demolishing of the, it's that exists, so, because I drive by this, that's, they've got two going in, the existing house is still up. At Roadway, the they have a road control, yeah. they have the detention pond all built. So this is kind of like a uh, subdivision with just one spot that's been left alone because they didn't know if it was going to be a, a two-family house or... When you say that the erosion control 
is up. controls in place. It's kind of, I mean, it's a construction site, and you know, it's pretty in rough shape. You know, raw, no grass, anything like that, except for this this one house. So, you know, thinking about it, I, I you know, I'd like to have the notice of intent, but since the rest of the site is very active, it, and they are they're out there with machinery right now, you know, it, it's up to you guys. But I don't think there's any more. Uh, precautions needed than they already have. Um, I don't really, and I, I don't think there's any more risk too because at the end of the yeah. day, if we needed to, I mean, that first notice of intent that we, uh, the, the first order of conditions that we uh, gave, it, which was for the the wall, the, the drain, the ponds, the road. It included that site. It includes that site, right? So we could, if something ever happened, we could apply the bond to that. No, I have a question. Is why is why is it that that didn't? Do you know why that didn't fly as a two-family? I don't know everything that Glenn looks at when he when he does that. You know, I don't know. Could it I mean, be size? Could it be? Well, it was. You know, there needs two. to be a record of it for yeah. one thing. I mean, oh. it needs to say somewhere that it was built as a two-family. I mean, that's one of the things. I, you know, just by being at the counter, I kind of hear these things. So yeah. don't. <coughs> I hope you have a two family based on that. There's got to be something else. I don't know. Because I know that there was one on Ash Street that people were using as a three family. And it was owned by the same family from like 1803. And they could go back, you know, so far that, you know, um, you know, when Uncle Harry came back from the First World War, he lived in the basement with his wife. And then his kids lived there. And, and, it, and it really came to a head. And they could actually. They could actually backtrack the history of the people that lived there, and that it was, you know, that it was at one time it was actually a three-family house. And one of the problems was they had an egress problem. But the one that was at that 1264 Main Street, I mean, when you look at the house, it, it's definitely a two-family. It had two, you know, heating systems. It had two, you know, electrical meters, two gas meters, you know, two decks. You know, above and below, it was a, it was I. In fact, the mother came in here. At, right at the very, very beginning, it was the mother and the daughter that lived in that house. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was like. I bet you, if Jackie comes back for that notice of intent, you can you can ask her what yeah. you know what the building department looks for. But mm -hmm. I, I would assume that she exhausted every. Um, you know, avenue to try to make that thing work. I, I think with the with the notice of intent, weren't they going to renovate that stru structure and call it two condos? They were going to sell it as two condos. I thought. I guess so. Yeah. Did um did they already demolish the pool? Yeah, it's gone. It's been gone. Yeah. Well, that's where the, the so that's not a complication. Right? What's that's that? Just, that's not a complication. No. All right. Well, I don't have a problem with them. Tearing down that, that that house. They are going to establish erosion control. I mean, they've already done yeah, that, right? Got yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. That. So we're getting it's not a supposedly getting reports from from John uh, Tilton, but I haven't got. I got one a long time ago, and then he was supposed to get yeah. more. Yeah. I haven't got the second one. So. The, the foundation for the the third house is in. I just noticed that today. Yeah. Yeah. And they're doing they're doing pretty good. I don't. The first know. the first house is. They're starting to cruise a little bit more. First house is roofed. And the second house is the is uh, framed, stuff. half framed, and the foundation is is uh, the, the the foundation walls are poured and stripped. To the third house, the one that's in the corner. Do we need to vote on this? Yeah. This? No. No. This was. You're just okay with me signing the demolition permit. There's nothing to vote. I just wanted to, Inform if you had some concerns. Chuck, I'm just curious, what, what would come of, of the regular business to, I don't know. Yeah, there's a bill, right, correct? There is a bill. So I have a bill for right next to Bob's house, the Pearl Street well, property. I'm telling you to put that on Bob's uh, house. Just It's actually gone up. <laughs> it's usually like sixteen dollars. It's nineteen dollars and seventy-one cents. This is our curb. Curb cut. This is our curb cut. Hey, our annual payment to the town of Reading. <coughs> it's every 
curb cut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to define a curb cut, the term's just a yeah. little ambiguous. This is no curb cut. You go from a road <laughs> with, with a seamless, smooth transition to a driveway, no curb, no nothing. Oh, you talk about into the conservation land? Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. a curb cut fee for that? Yep. Water sewer fee. Every quarter. For what? There's nothing up there. No, there's, you're talking about yeah, the, the conservation lot. parking lot? Yeah, there's yes. a off Pearl Street. No, it's not Bridge Meadow, it's Bear Meadow. Bear Meadow. Bear Meadow. Bear Meadow. But there's no Pearl water Street. up there. It's not like there's a fountain. <clears throat> there's nothing there. It's stormwater we, runoff. We, we went after this a couple years we back and there was nothing. It, it, it does seem, so I, like when you, one of you guys run for some maybe this is something we can talk about, but. <laughs> Stormwater <laughs> drain rate. $19 that yeah. 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 we pay to ourselves. <laughs> it has I'm a not curb. trying to open it again. I just, I'm curious. I just, there's no curb there, but is he talking about the. Correct. The idea is that it's running off right. into the, into so the okay. public. In, into the public system. How can we never got one from Matera? Okay, well. If you, you come out that driveway, it's just a state, the highway. State, highway. state highway. Hmm? Okay. This is this is town. The so, the, out of the driveway, so that so that stormwater, that whole thing, as they ride directly across the street from it, yeah. and they all run on an easement right through my across the so street. So this fee out to the wetlands. gets added into my water we, sewer. We pay for that? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, the total readings then. Yeah. If they have, if if they've ever got to replace it, because it gets silted up, but there's issues. Because I pay for town. Was that cost us fifteen bucks a year or something? It was like 16 for a long time, and it's, now it's this it's one says 1971. That's outrageous. 25% increase. Don't break that down on my bill. Uh, that's, 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 that's a quarter, that's, not a year, no, though, right? No, we get the MWR yeah. water. That's and a quarter. quarter. That's a 20 percent increase. I, I will say. Under the town's letterhead. Man, if we can do this kind of math. This, this, this has to be like in there. 16 something, 1646 to 1971. I don't see, well, you know, I don't see anything. Itemized. Well, it's just weird. Is this a, this app geo thing here? Mm-hmm. Is that something that, obviously, can anybody buy that? Or do you have to be a town agency or? You can actually just go to the Reading website. Town website and click on the map page. If you go to Google Reading Mass, Reading M-A-G-I-S, Really? You'll be amazed. Yeah. Uh, how how current is it? Depends on what you're looking for. Well, I'm not trying to spy on anybody. I just didn't know if it was. <laughs> it runs. It runs Here's the main probably page. about <laughs> eight months behind on. Like oh right. Okay. It, there is that. <laughs> Would you say what? <laughs> uh, no, I said here's the main page and. Uh, Right down here at the bottom is the link. And here we go, online mapping. There's uh, other maps too. So Trail maps. Now that's yeah. obvious. Blah, blah, blah. So the town of Reading is paying to have this level of kind of detail mm -hmm. and layering on the map? The town of Reading uses this to for public services. And they're also, they think it's such a great and wonderful thing for people to know about that it's on our website too for for basically everyone in town to use also. Interesting. So it's pretty standard at this point that most towns. Mm -hmm. I, you can go to I, Mike's house and see what's going on there or anybody's house. I, I mean, I, I use just regular Google Earth all the time, but this has got. Well, this is much good because stuff. right here on this side you have property card info. Property card info. You have you know a lot of stuff, uh, that, and then up here and the themes you can check out the aerial which we did we can go into zoning with the wetland layer natural resources water protection uh, the flood maps these flood maps when you want to look at a house so when someone's looking for in, in this community to find out what's going on they can find out what the house is you know what the house costs when the last time it was sold if it's in a flood zone what districts it, it's in what zoning layer it's in, aquifer <coughs> protection district, for instance, you know, 25% or, you know, that's all you can have pervious, uh, 2,500 square feet or 15%. Does it tell um, you if they have any plans of putting a T-stop in front of your house? <laughs> you can also search this for, for um, open area easements to access that open area. You can do a lot of things. It's, um, I tell everyone about it so, you know, they, so, you know, 
obviously it's it's an interesting site they won't call us because as soon as they learn how to use it if say it's a realtor or something like that you can go right there and check out all the information okay. so they're being empowered and yeah did any back feed from our rejecting the offer from Latham on the property anything come of that yet or not that would necessarily not that they would be, but I was just wondering if it was. I, I told Matt um, Cornelis, and he, I just said that we did, weren't interested, and uh, he talked to Mr. Latham. So I, I didn't talk to him directly after that. But I, but I was thinking about the site today, because sometimes, you know, you have to go all, I have to drive all around Reading. So sometimes I go up Lowell, out on the highway, and then come back in because you can see all those properties on the edge. And I went past this property today, the one that you couldn't get into. If you drive by it today or tomorrow, you can see directly into it and just, you know, all the way up to where you got in. You're talking about from the highway or from the... From the highway. From the dead end yeah, so on the on-ramp and then start looking, you see the mound and then you can see where it's, you know, straight through the woods. Well, you can only go so far because the fence is six feet high. I was just driving past yeah. and I had a great view of it and then I saw like this uh, mound of dirt and... It just know. looks very different now because I, I, I know Did you see the, same, the same thing. Yeah. Same thing, I don't know if it was yesterday or today, but I just did it. You can see right through it, yeah. It's well worth checking out. As we were standing there. You never look at that spot. It was kind of like yeah. a very gradual dip off of what made the ramp surface whatever grade it was at. And then it came up like the small escarpment and we were discussing whether or not that might have been some kind of backfill or just the removal of whatever virgin earth was there to accommodate the needs for the road. But they had a fence just the top of the, just the crest of that escarpment, didn't they? Did I recall? Uh, yeah. Eventually it flattened out yeah. when the fence just ran along adjacent parallel to the highway, but. Was it, yeah. I mean, that should be, you know, for the, for the neighbors. Yeah, so, yeah, we had a uh, 40B project that's on the highway also, so that's why I was kind of heading in that direction. Do we have anything else? Another one? Another 40B project? It's Wilmington. It's not ours. Oh. So, and it's, it's the fam same people that are bringing forward Lakeview and Eaton as the same team that's doing this other one. Um, so it's right here somewhere. In Wilmington? This area right That's here. That's Wilmington? Turn oh, lane. that line. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I know. We have Wilmington encroaching on our side of the highway and... Yeah, very into Grove Street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if you go all the way Wakefield. into... That's Wakefield. Is that Wakefield? <coughs> That's okay. Wakefield. You know, West Crawford. Is this Wilmington up yeah, there? so that Tarrant Lane, those weird, creepy houses that used to be for the Nike Missile, yeah. that's Wakefield. Yeah. Well, they weird, creepy yeah. houses. Yeah. Those are weird, creepy houses are going to be gone. Those, those are creepy houses. There's supposed to be a lot of ledge hill. there. Uh, he bought him a bear hill, right? They, they actually he sold those down. last spring. I don't know what. There's house, I, I, I just I haven't gone by them, but there's cars there now. You're talking about you go and continue up the hill. He used to be Housing yeah, oh, for the, the Nike Missile. Hopkins. Hopkins Street. Well, the Nike Missiles, I thought, were down at the... The, uh, the right along 93. They just used to keep yeah. people here. Yeah. Yeah. In the east. I mean... Yeah, they're right along 93. Who? The, the, those, uh, those 128. Houses. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. 128. 128. No. <laughs> they look like Hopkins Street. They come across 128. Something out of Chernobyl. Right right here. Yeah. Up by Tower. Towers. That's Wakefield. You could buy one. I don't want to buy one. I think it's going to be for sale soon. I remember... Driving by that one day, or being I mean, like, "Well, why? Why is this weird thing in our town?" And then figuring out that this, finding it, out the story, it was in our town. and finding out that it wasn't our town, <laughs> and then finding the story behind them. Did you ever go up Westcroft Road, or I think it's County Road? It uh, runs almost perpendicular to it, but there's two or three, like Howard Street and maybe one other street that they go up to County. Take a right on County. It's almost like you're in an area of town you can't get out of. There's, right. there's a couple access roads. Right you went down County Road, there's a small road just before you get to the cul-de-sac, dead end. You take a left down that road, there are two houses at the bottom of that hill. 
and they're right adjacent to 93, they yeah. live and move it. Right. They have to, they, oh, they have to, everything that they rely on for services. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Is in about. Reading. Right up here. One of those houses owned by my cousin. There's three houses down there, I think. I was amazed when you said, yeah, I, no, I technically live in Woven. They, they didn't put a tunnel under the highway so you could get to Woven? Right. The rest of it? You <laughs> said, right. no. You know what the interesting thing is? You know that, <clears throat> remember the, the, the site that we went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth with the one that was right on the border, on Border Road. Yes. You realize that the house that's next to it, that that the people that own that property, who, who own the mobile gas station, mm -hmm. that house is in Woob. Oh, is it really? That brick house. Oh, across across the street. Yes. The two brand new ones. No. So you have the mobile station. You have I don't remember what the people's names was, but it was the son and daughter of the people that originally yes. owned the mobile gas station. Here's the benefits of Map Geo. <laughs> here is the site right here. Yeah. It's, it's not in Woburn. So that on border travel. road, is it everybody it's, on the left side yeah. of border road so is in Woburn look, on the right side look of the road? Look at the, look at the yeah. town line. Yeah, yeah right here. Right the yeah. Road. Uh, so there's two new houses oh. right here. Yeah. And those are in Woburn. Oh, 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 oh. oh and just those are the ones that they saw getting built and they said, whoa, how how, how can we capitalize? Oh, so the rest of the road is in Reading. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought half the road was moving, half the road was, was Reading all the way down. Yeah. Oh, that that's not what it showed on the one that I looked at. I looked at one on Google Maps, and it showed just as a matter of fact, it showed it showed the brick house. It it showed it went eh, and then it came right out, so that the brick house that was right across from um, the mobile gas station was in Wuben. Mm -hmm. And then that lot that we approved was in Reading. Right. Uh, if you look on, really it, it's, it's <laughs> different than this. It shows it the other way. Hmm. More? Oh, wow. No, I just, I just did this. I, was just, I, I never realized how far back this road went or this road. Just drive by. All these have looked there never gone down. That's a real bizarre yeah. kind of boundary for moving. Reading, that's weird. Yeah. So through their minds, Chuck. Yeah, my, we, my, um, we approved the. Um, my, my sister and, uh, owns a house on Richard Circle. Well, we Her house is in in it's a big, it's a big area. Yeah, the girl that lives across the street is in Reddit. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I can actually pull it up. So, um, if we're done, we should we should end the meeting. But before we do, I just want to let you know that. Um, we're getting help with minutes now, and um, that should be, it should be pretty, pretty much systematic, you know, one person looks it over, sends it out to you guys. You're going to get a copy in your packets, you make your, um, this is how, how I can figure out how to do it, everyone make any kind of changes on the paper, and then bring it to the meeting. Let me discuss it as okay. the minutes you can't discuss these things over the internet or yeah. through email. Right. So Fine. if you had a question, you could email me directly without involving anyone. Good. Okay. So I assume everybody saw that thing from Laura. You're gonna do by the end of the month. Review your open law meeting stuff. Open meeting law? Promises you get till the end of December to do something. Pretty sure it was open meeting law. Yeah. Or maybe it was conflict ethics, and ethics and. Yeah, the conflict of interest was just. You just did she that just last sent that. Yeah. In the past year, and they have the thing at the Highland School or the. Uh, well, you have to do it when you first library. join. And then you have to do it on a regular basis. So you might just. Okay, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor?